In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the forecast feature in Excel. So let's say if we have the X values in column B and the Y values in column C. So let's say that when X is 1, Y is, let's go by 5s, 5. When X is 2, Y is 10. And when X is 3, y is going to be 15. When x is 4, y is 20, and so forth. So what we have is basically a linear relationship between x and y. Now, what if x was 75? What would the y value be? Now granted, we could probably use the fill function and extend it all the way to 75, but that's going to take a long time and it's going to involve a lot of rows, but is there an easier way to find a y value given the x value? One way you can uh, do that is by using the forecast function. So here we're going to put in the x value, and we're going to get the y value. So in cell C10, type in equal forecast. There's different types of forecast functions. Forecast.ets is if you have an exponential model. And forecast.linear, you could use that if you have a linear model, which we do have that in this case. Or you could use the last option, simply forecast. Now, if you look at the first one here, this is our x value. So our x value, we're going to enter it in cell B10. So you can click it or type in cell B10. Next select the known y values and then press comma and then select the known x values and then close the parentheses. Now let's say if we plug in a 1 into uh, this cell. Notice that we're going to get the y value of 5. If we plug in 3 it will give us the y value 15 which corresponds to 3. If we plug in 4 we're going to get 20. If we plug in 6 we'll get the next number in the list, 30. So now, what is y when x is 75? If we put in 75, it's going to give us 375. So it's going to forecast the y value based on the x value that we enter, and it's going to follow the relationship that we have here. So let's use the forecast function to solve another problem. So let's say we have the year and the population. Let's say the population of cats on an island. So let's say in the year 2000, the population is 1,500 cats. By 2001, it's about 1,580 cats. And 2002, let's say it's about 1690. In 2003, let's say it's about 1800. And then 2004, we'll say 1920. 2005, we'll say it's about 2050. And then 2006, let's say it's about 21, 2200. So as we can see, we have a nice steady growth in the cat population. So now what we're going to do is we're going to enter a year and use the forecast function to determine what the cat population will approximately be. So let's type in equal forecast. And then for the x value, let's select cell E12. And then the known y values, that's going to be our population. And then the known x values, the year. So let's see what's going to happen. Let's say if we put in the year 2000, we get 1469. I mean, it's not too far from 1500, but this is not a perfect linear model. So let's say in the year 2003, it's about 1820, which is not too far from 1800. So we don't have an exact linear relationship, but Excel is going to use its best fit model to give us a number. So let's say in 2005, it's 2053. That's close to 2050. Now, based on this forecast, 
what will the population of cats be, let's say, in the year 2020? So in the year 2020, it's going to be about 3,800. And if you extend this to 2020, you should get a number close to 3,800. So let's say in the year 2050, following this pattern, the cat population should be 7,308. Of course, it also depends on the resources of the islands, but that's how you can use the forecast function to basically estimate what a number is going to be based on a given trend. Now, I'm going to change the forecast function. Let's use forecast ETS and turn it into an exponential model. So let's say if we plug in 2000, we get 1300, which is further away from that. 2001, that's still pretty far away. Let's see, 2003, 1750, 2005, okay, that's getting closer, and 2006, that's about 2200. So this didn't work very well towards the year 2000, but towards 2006, it was almost accurate. Let's see, 2020, that's about 4280, and then 2050, 8752. So if your model is more exponential than linear, you could use the exponential uh, function. But this is still, it's more linear than exponential. Here, we increased by 80 in the first year, and then in the next year, it increased by 110, and then it increased by 110 again, and then 120, 130. So it's slightly exponential, but not exactly linear, but it's somewhere in between. So we can't get a perfect estimation uh, with this uh, particular uh, data set. But now let's try another example. Let's say if we have the year and the value of a car. Let's say you buy the car in the year 2000, and the car is worth, let's say you paid 20000 for it. And in the first year, it depreciates to, let's say, 17000 And then in the second year, it goes down to 15500 And then in the third year, let's say it goes down to 14500 and then in the fourth year, it goes down to 13700 And then in the fifth year, it goes down to 13000 So based on this pattern, in the year 2010 and 2020, what should we expect the car value to be? So let's use the forecast function to get that answer. So let's type in equal forecast and let's select cell H12 comma the car value will be the known values and then the year will be the X values. So let's see how accurate it is. In 2000 we have almost 19,000 that's a little off. 2001 17,580 so it's getting closer. Let's see, 2003, 14,961, that's not too far away from 14,500. And 2005, it's a little bit less than 13,000. But let's see what the model is going to predict in 2010. So in 2010, I believe it's going to drop to 5,781. And let's see, in 2020, a negative. Okay, so this particular forecast didn't work very well. So let's try forecast dot. ETS. So in 2000, hmm, this forecast function is not too great. In 2010, it's going to be 7,000. Excel doesn't know to not go below zero. So it's going to have a negative value for the car value because it's going to keep on decreasing. But of course, we know that in reality, the car value won't drop below zero. It's going to be worth something. But at least that's how you could use the forecast function. It's not perfect, but you can basically estimate what the future value will be based on a given data set. So that's how you use it in this uh, video. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.